So the Guardians, Logan Allen silenced the Orioles offense yesterday as he was able to rack up 10 strikeouts, giving up only three hits and allowing two free passes during his seven innings of work. Now, not only was Cleveland's pitching on point, but their offense put up a healthy number as well in the seventh, thanks to a Cam Gallagher single to right and a Stephen Kwan hustle RBI double to center field. In the end, Cleveland shut out Baltimore 5-0. Now, the only news to come from the O's was bad, as star center fielder Cedric Mullins left the game in the eighth after attempting to beat out a grounder hit to shortstop. Now, Baltimore is officially calling the injury a light abducular or groin strain. Now, despite Mullins still needing to undergo further testing, it is expected he will see a substantial stint on the IL. Now, Baltimore is expected to recall former Tiger outfielder Daz Cameron in his replacement. Now, speaking of the Tigers, they were trying to go for their second win in a row and narrow the Twins' lead in the AL Central to just one full game. However, the Rangers, Nathan Eovaldi, had other plans. Because Eovaldi for Texas and Boyd for Detroit would go toe-to-toe -to -toe in Motown as they both worked past five innings. However, the difference maker was in the top of the fifth when Texas got two men on with two men out. The Rangers shortstop, Corey Seager, would step up to the plate and send a first pitch curveball into the right field bleachers to give Texas a three run advantage going into the second half of the game. Now despite this middle inning blow, Boyd still ended up lasting an inning more six than his counterpart Eovaldi who lasted five. Now this fact wouldn't matter however as Detroit struggled to get across any runs as they left eight men on base. And the biggest missed opportunity occurred in the second inning when they had the bases loaded and nobody out and their catcher Eric Haas at the dip. Now, unfortunately, Haas hit a bouncer to first baseman Nate Lowe, who threw home to get the force. And then a batter later, Abanez hit into a double play to end the inning. Texas would win the game 5 to nothing. And now, before we go any further, I have to make a big announcement. I have a brand new documentary dropping on this channel Thursday, June the 1st at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, the documentary is entitled The Toughest Man in Sports, The Lou Gehrig Story. Now, this documentary covers the life and career of Henry Louis Gehrig, a Yankees legend, played in 2,130 consecutive games. So I would really appreciate if you guys could turn on those post notifications, ring the bell, so you guys don't miss this documentary again and it's dropping Thursday, June the 1st at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So yeah, don't forget to check it out and enjoy the rest of the video. Now the former 2017 first round pick, Royce Lewis, made his triumphant return to the big leagues yesterday. Now if you remember, Lewis tore his ACL basically a year ago today and really hasn't had the opportunity to play a full season of pro ball since 2019 where he played in a total of 127 games between high A and double A and the Arizona Fall League I might add. So this means yesterday was a big day for Lewis and he did not squander this opportunity because he got the Twins on the board first in the third inning after lining a ball over the right field wall. This put Minnesota ahead by three after three. But Houston would take the lead right back in the bottom of the seventh after one swing off the bat from Jose Altuve as he hit a grand slam, putting his squad ahead by one run. It was five to four strokes. However, Lewis wasn't done impressing as the biggest hit of his career came in the top of the ninth inning as he hit an RBI single to center field to tie the game at five. Then an inning later, Jeffers put the nail in the Astros coffin after home run to left field, this shot secured the 7-5 victory for Minnesota. Now the Halos jumped out to an early four-run lead following back-to-back -back jacks from Brandon Drury, who had a three-run shot, and Matt Sice, who launched a solo blast and at-bat later. But the White Sox did make it a one-run game after Andrew Vaughn hit a solo home run in the fourth and Gonzalez hit a blast of his own in the fifth. It was four to three LA. But the best highlight to come out of the south side was the return of reliever Liam Hendricks. Now Hendricks made his 2023 debut and his first appearance on a big league diamond since announcing his diagnosis of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma back in January of this year. Now Hendricks was greeted with a flurry of cheers. It was no doubt an emotional moment 
at guaranteed right field last night. Now let's go over what Hendricks did on the mound as he first gave up a single to Matt Seiss. Then he got Urshela to ground out to first base, which was the first out he recorded. However, after that, Hendricks would relinquish some runs after Zach Nito hit a sack fly and Mike Trout hit an RBI single off the glove of the leaping shortstop Tim Anderson. This made it a 6-3 LA lead. Now Hendricks would eventually finish his one inning of work after getting Shohei Otani to ground out into a force play at second base to end the frame. For Hendricks, he ended his night topping out at 96.6 miles an hour among his 27 pitches. But LA would hold on to win the game by the score of 6-4. So let's head to Seattle where the Yankees flexed their muscles to start. Jake Bowers hit an RBI double to right. This made it 1-0 Yankees after one and a half. Now the M's tied things at one via a Hernandez RBI ground out that scored Jared Kelnick. The Yankees would surge back in the third as Aaron Judge broke the 1-1 tie with one swing of his bat, sending his 16th home run of the year to left field, putting New York on top 3-1. Then, just an inning later, Bowers came through once again via his own home run. This made it a three-run Yankee lead 4-1. Now J-Rod gifted some fans free airlines tickets. After sending a ball over the left field wall, this made it a 4-2 Yankee lead. However, the reigning MVP Aaron Judge would get the last laugh as he hit his second home run of the night in the sixth to give the Bombers a five-run lead. Now Judge wasn't only swinging the bat really well yesterday, he was also flashing some leather as he robbed Teoscar Hernandez of a home run in the eighth as you can see here, he jumped just in front of the right field wall, stretching his glove over the yellow line to bring that ball back in play and record a big out for the Bombers. In the end, New York would beat Seattle by the score of 10 to four. And that's all I got. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, check out my Lou Gehrig documentary dropping this Thursday, June the 1st at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'd appreciate it. And as always, I will catch you guys later.